Hello. Few days later, we are going to discuss physical geography of South Asia. We are going to discuss landforms, major rivers, climate, and major environmental issues. Landforms. We can divide South Asia into several major landform regions. Mountains of the north. Then, to the south, southeast, and west of these mountains, you have a, you have a vast lowland area. We call it the Indo Ganges Brahmaputra lowland. Then, to the south. You have a triangle region, the entirely part of the Indian. We call this the Peninsula Indian. Then you have two island countries of the land. We call this together the Southern Island. Let's discuss each of them in turn. Mountains of the North. We can divide these mountains into three sections. The eastern section, the mountain here is called the Arakan Yoma. This mountain separates South Asia from Southeast Asia. Specifically, this mountain separates Indian and Bangladesh from Myanmar. The northern section has a mountain such as Himalayas and Karakunri. These mountains separate South Asia from East Asia, specifically, they separate Indian, Nepal, and Bhutan from Tibet or China. In the western section, you have the Hindu caste and the Suleiman range. These mountains separate South Asia from Central Asia and Southwest Asia. Specifically, they separate. Pakistan from Tajikistan, Afghanistan, and Iran. These mountains form important geographical boundaries, but they are not nearly as prohibitive because within those mountains there are important mountain passes. Passes. Those mountain passes allow flows of people. Especially at the western section, important mountain passes such as Khyber Pass between Pakistan and Afghanistan allow flows of people, allow migration during historical time from Central Asia to and the southwest uh, Southwest Asia to South Asia. Those migration have significant impact on ethnic and cultural makeup of South Asia. Indo Ganges Brahmaputra lowland. This big uh, lowland is formed by several major rivers the Indus River, the Ganges River, and the Brahmaputra River. So, therefore, we can divide the entire lowland areas into several components. The Indus River Valley as one component, the Ganges Valley, then you have this delta region, the Ganges from Abuja Delta. Then you have the Tar Desert. Some people also call this the Great Indian Desert. These valleys and the deltas are the important areas for agriculture. Also, there are a lot of important population centers in this region. They are the important core areas of Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh. The Peninsula India, the most important geographical feature in Peninsula India is Deccan Plateau. Deccan Plateau, in terms of its agricultural potential, this part, the eastern half, is not very favorable. The land is poor, it's a sandy land, it does not retain water very well. The land is also become very eroded by those local rivers and was cut 
into very fragmented structure. But the portion of the Deccan Plateau that is covered by lava could be very fertile. Lava is the material, you know, the molten material inside the Earth penetrate near surface or onto surface uh, due to geological activity. Those lava uh, contain a lot of minerals and that help enrich the land. So the places of the Deccan Plateau that's covered with lava land is actually fertile. We also see the uh, coastal mountain range here, the Western Gulf and the Eastern Gulf. The Western Gulf is relatively high and it uh, uh, somehow blocked the mansion wing and prevented it from fully penetrating into the inland and that made the rest of the Deccan Plateau relatively dry, not conducive to agricultural. In addition to the uh, coastal mountain, we also have coastal plains on both the western side and the eastern side. Southern Island. Sri Lanka is a tear-shaped uh, island. You have uh, central and south is a mountain, and also you have a uh, coastal plain all around. The Maldives is actually a chain of Carol Atoll. An atoll is a ring-shaped coral reef. And uh, in the surrounding area, you have is a uh, coral ring. And in the middle is a lake, or they call it lagoon. The Maldives is a very flat, low-lying country. The highest point in the country is only eight feet above the ocean. Major rivers. There are rivers of all different sizes in South Africa. Let's focus on the ma three major rivers. The Indus River, the Ganges River, and the Brahmaputra River. As you can see, they all originate from the Tibetan Plateau. The Indus River, 1,800 miles. And in this river is the cradle of indigenous cultures in South Asia. In a later uh, lecture, we are going to talk about the Indus Valley civilization. The word India is actually derived from Indus. So you can see the significant impact of this river on the culture and the civilization in South Asia. Punjab, this area is called Punjab. The word Punjab means the land of five rivers because you have these five major tributary rivers to the Indus River. In the past, there is a integrated Punjab uh, area. Today, Punjab has been divided in, uh, into two. You have Pakistan portion of Punjab, Punjab province in Pakistan. You also have Indian portion of Punjab. You have a state of Punjab in India as well. So Punjab area in the past was mainly populated by the Sikhs, but today in the Pakistan side of uh, Punjab, uh, most of the Sikhs have migrated to uh, Indian Punjab. Indus River is a major source of irrigation for agriculture in the Indus Valley because it's a central and a lower reaches. It's just the desert and in the upper reaches is semi-arid condition. Without irrigation, it is very difficult to develop agriculture in the Indus Valley. And therefore, the water usage is also a source of conflict between the Indian and the Pakistan. And during the 1960s, the, uh, uh, the World Bank had to step in to sponsor some water health products so that they can uh, share water in those uh, tributaries that run through both countries. The Ganges River, the Indians call this river also the Ganga, 1,360 miles. 
the Ganges River is a sacred river for the Hindus. So uh, many sites have a pilgrimage along the uh, Ganges uh, River. Uh, every year we saw, we see millions of Hindus step into the water of the Ganges River to perform ritual purification to purify their soul. The Ganges River is also a very fertile land for agriculture. This uh, river basin has been intensely cultivated for thousands of years uh, since ancient times. Indians have built some dams on the river, on the Ganges River. One particular place is here. Uh, the dam there is called the uh, uh, Bharata Bare. Um, they built a dam there to take the water away from the Ganges River for city usage. But that reduced the water supply to Bangladesh. So you can see that between India and Bangladesh, there are also water usage dispute. The Ganges uh, Valley is highly eroded because of the uh, long uh, time of usage occupation and uh, uh, agriculture also because of the uh, frequent flooding in the river valley. Annually, annually we have approximately 4,000 acres of land lost to irrigation. The river in the water in the Ganges River is also very polluted. You have all kinds of industries and religious rituals and they throw all kinds of things into the river. The damming really does not help either. You dam the river on the upper reaches that would reduce the water supply of the lower reaches that aggravate the pollution problem. Brahmaputra River, 1800 miles, and it uh, you know, actually originated in uh, southern Tibet and flowing to the east at first, then have a southern turn to the south entering India, then later on um, flow to the west again, then flow to the south, enter Bangladesh. Within Bangladesh, it converts with the Ganges River from the Magna uh, River. This delta sometimes is called the twin delta, uh, the twin in the sense both the Ganges and the Brahmaputra River contribute to contribute huge amount of silt and sediment to forming this delta. Brahmaputra River is not only important in terms of agriculture to uh, Bangladesh, but also it is important in terms of hydroelectricity. The hydropower from the uh, Brahmaputra River contributes 50% of the power in Bangladesh. But uh, beyond the recent years, the Chinese began to build some big dams on the upper reach of the Brahmaputra River, and that raised concerns for both India and uh, Bangladesh. The Ganges uh, uh, Delta region is really a low-lying land, and that makes the region uh, kind of susceptible to flooding problems. 